typical way that people try to pronounce it, Shomo Yoho. Shomo Yoho. You guys making any videos on Shmo Yoho? Shmo Yoho, on the yo. My name is Evan Gregory. I'm Andrew Gregory. We are two of the Gregory brothers, the other two being our brother Michael and my wife Sarah. We run the YouTube channel Shmo Yoho. Accent on the yo. I want those mothers, moms are like no other lovers. Who I want a girl with a big fat vocabulary. If you a mother, what the heck is going on? Fire to blast. Bourbon, bourbon whiskey. We're primarily known for Songify This and Songify The News, a YouTube series where we take stuff that was never meant to be a song and create a song out of it. It was never intentionally meant to be a song. It might have been like destined to be a song in like a more cosmic sense. Right. That's what we see our job as, is kind of uncovering the songs that were wrongfully hidden within ordinary videos. A lot of this started in like 2007, 2008 for us. Um, we were on tour as a band and we were running the Gregory Brothers YouTube channel as just a way to like put up videos of our live performances that I think now are thankfully privated. Uh, and Michael was running the YouTube channel Shmoyoho as a way to put up like music videos he was making at college slash to leave comments on Ali G videos that were illegally uploaded. So during the 2008 election, we'd come off the road and we were all living in New York. Michael had moved up here after he finished school and he made a video that got tens of thousands of views. So many on views. On his channel, which just amazed all of us. So we just said, you know what, you should do a video for the next debate. It was Palin versus Biden and we'll just stay up all night and help you with it. And that was really the beginning of our collaboration on Shmoyo. Yeah, I'd say it was the spring of 2009 that we had a hit on a level that kind of opened our eyes like, a oh, week. if we put some more effort into this, like maybe we could really make this go and this, we could just be doing YouTube and music videos. So the one that really broke big was called Auditune the News number two. And that was maybe April 2009. Well, I'm not feeling any romance between us right now. You gotta do it like this. Shawty, ready, set, go. This was a pretty remarkable week on the gay marriage front. First of all, to have a state like Iowa. What you trying to say about Iowa? Pot alone or all drugs, including heroin, cocaine, and meth. My brain says no, but my body says yes. Within a couple weeks, we started to get emails from people, from people like with commercial requests and stuff, or people for other YouTube channels that were like hiring Michael to come write music for their YouTube channel. And it was sort of like, oh, Okay, like maybe this would be a way into freelancing. Like there, that was the mentality in 2009. That's like, oh, if we use this as our reel, basically, we'll get work that pays. And then within a year, just the ecosystem of YouTube changed where it was sort of like, oh, now we'll get paid for the ads instead of just paying YouTube. Yeah, it was within that year, approximately, that YouTube had this idea like, oh, what if we offered people some of the ad money on their videos, maybe people would make more videos. Now it seems so obvious, but at, at the time it was not. So I'd say it, we kind of gradually left our jobs over the ensuing months, but by 2010, we were all just doing this. Hello? Welcome to our creative space. Is that how you start this? You've come into, as you can tell, the ping pong zone. This is where we challenge everyone who enters the studio to a ping pong match. And if you win, you get to leave alive. So you're up in five minutes. This is our costume department. Um, we have a lot of costumes in here that we bought, like for instance, this penguin, this set of penguin pajamas. The penguin that pajamas. I'm a little embarrassed at how much money I spent on them to, for like 10 seconds in the video where we were like giving Zoolander arms and he's wearing like a, a penguin onesie. So I was like, well, we need some penguin sleeves. Um, but a lot of this is like- There's lots of reasons to wear after penguin pajamas. After you start pajamas. making videos where you wear silly costumes, you'd be surprised at how many of your friends and family like want to clean out their own closets by just sending you the stuff they like want to get rid of but don't really want to get so rid of. We just got a reputation in our circle of family and friends as the people who use weird clothes. Yeah. So now people give us all their weird a clothes. A lot of stuff in the mail just being like, ah, I was going to throw these ties away, but I, here they are for you. Yeah, this is a good songwriting space for just uh, collaborating on some songs. The wall is decorated from fan art that we got in the mail. 
So when we moved into this space, which is basically an empty warehouse, there was just this random shelf here. So we just decided, well, we'll just put our recording equipment up there. And it's not an elaborate setup in here, but it's good for for what we do, sequencing a lot of original tracks and recording here. And we do uh, all of our composing in here and some mixing, although sometimes we'll like ship mixing out to freelancers and stuff. We try to do a lot of collaboration where we can kind of be the creative directors of everything, but get as many tasks off our plate as we can. <laughs> But we can use this for ping pong death matches, also music rehearsals, but we can also, the ping pong table folds up. You can wipe the whole room, pull down the green set paper, and then we have this really long potential focal length for all different types of green screen and shots that we need to do. Yeah, I will give anyone who's ever thinking about putting in a green screen like this a small piece of advice, which is do not pick up your 15 foot seamless at the store and try to get it home by yourself. Just pay the $100 for delivery. Just get it delivered. It's worth it. The bed intruder phenomenon was really big for us, but really at the beginning of it, we were just a part of an even bigger wave. He's climbing in your windows, he's snatching your people up, trying to rape them, so y'all need to hide your kids, hide your wife, hide your kids, hide your wife, hide your kids, hide your wife, and hide your husband, because they're raping everybody out here. At that time, in the summer of 2010, like we had a bunch of fans around our series Auto-Tune the News, but we still felt like we were a drop in the bucket of YouTube's remix culture. When Antoine Dodson's interview came out, which, uh, well, it just, it just took over YouTube on a scale that we had never seen, even with other videos going viral. And so we felt like, oh, we're gonna make a song out of this and um, see if we can sort of like amplify his message into this like anthem that you could sing along to uh, and like be on his side. And lo and behold, instead of just being a drop in the bucket, our song became the main thing that summarized the whole phenomenon. And the Bed Intruder song became bigger than the original interview, which had already been huge. So I'd say the way it, it was really different than many other videos we've released is that you saw it make it out of just YouTube into wider culture. Everyone had heard it, not just the people that were on YouTube all the time. Uh, the song itself crossed over to the Billboard Hot 100, so it had some kind of tendrils out into mainstream culture that m much of YouTube doesn't, doesn't do. Really the first step of making a songification is finding the right unintentional singer. And occasionally you know about that unintentional singer in advance. You know, this fall we're doing the presidential debates. We can mark all four of those presidential debates on the calendar and know that Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton are gonna say amazing things in front of, uh, you know, a seated audience. Um, I, with something like The Bed Intruder, it's like, we didn't know that was gonna happen. We're just kind of always watching our Twitter feeds and what's happening on Facebook and what's trending on YouTube to sort of say like, well, is there a kind of viral moment that really works? Our videos are still at their heart music videos. So our process reflects that. Uh, as, as fun as the video, the picture side of it can be, it's really driven by the song. So that comes first for us. Specifically for the debates is just, we kind of committed to our audience, like this is a thing we're gonna do. So for each debate, we're gonna to try to create a song that summarizes the best moments and the energy from that night and release it the next day. We're gonna make it easy on ourselves by not trying to do everything in one night. We can do a lot of stuff in the, in the run up to the event. We can create some music. We can anticipate what the feel of the thing is, is gonna be and try to make a a great track. We can also predict a lot of the time what is gonna be said at the debate. Because you can kind of guess what questions are going to be asked and you already know what the candidates are gonna say in response to each question. At least that's been the case in previous years. I think this year there's maybe some question as to how Donald Trump is gonna answer any given question. Right. So we're all gonna watch the debate together. We'll be taking notes for like, these are the best clips. Uh, and then as soon as the debate's over, we like s split up and a couple of us will focus on the like songification side of the audio. 
and we'll be chopping up clips, we'll be comparing notes, what were the best moments, like, oh, what were the sickest burns, you know, or whatever. And we'll grab those and start composing a song. On the other side, a couple of us will go to like the edit bays, start pulling footage and doing the same things. Where are those sick burns that we agree we're gonna use? Let's start pulling video. Let's start uh, creating this fantasy world where the audience members are dancing and reacting and the presidential candidates are. And so we try to work those two streams at once so that then as the song comes to completion, you're not starting from scratch in the video. You've, ar you've already been composing those same assets and the two streams uh, c come together uh, at, at the end. And then you sprinkle some pixie dust on it at 7 a.m. and upload it. So it's about one hour until the debate. Michael is frantically working on the track. Uh, Aaron, uh, a musician we work with, is in there working on the mix. Amelia's over here working on some plates and getting ready to just like pull clips like crazy as the debate is happening. Right now the song is in an embryonic state, but I can play a little bit of it. A song is worth a thousand words, or at least about 70 words. <laughs> And that's all we have so far. It's five seconds long. <laughs> <laughs> so we're almost done pretty much. Sean Hannity, Sean Hannity, Sean Hannity, Sean Hannity, Sean Hannity, Sean Hannity. Sean Hannity. <clears throat> Can we do, let's do a couple where we're singing, like singing the bro voice, yeah. and then a couple where we're only shouting, so okay. then we can, we can divide them. Okay, copy. So this one's sung. Oh, Sean. yeah. You doing breathy? Okay, yeah. I'll do a breathy. Sean Hannity. Sean Hannity, Sean Hannity, Sean Hannity, Sean Hannity. Song of I spoke to Sean Hannity, everybody refuses to call Sean Hannity, Sean Hannity, nobody calls Sean Hannity. I said the war's a stupid thing, if somebody would call Sean Hannity. Woo, okay. Oh, uh, why should we vote for you? Japan, we don't pay. What magical things will we should raise a minimum wage. Yeah, I highly recommend uh, having coworkers that you've known for 30 years is very convenient in many ways. Um, working with your brothers, uh, I'm just gonna answer from my own heart, and then you be honest. You just pretend you don't even hear me, and you answer however you want. Okay, I can take it. Uh, working with your brothers offers like huge advantages of you get each other's sense of humor implicitly and you, you're not explaining things to each other all, all the time. You're on the same page creatively for so many reasons, having this like wealth of inside jokes, stories, references, aesthetics. Um, so that's a huge advantage in like a, in a creative in, endeavor. And also you can borrow each other's car and take the same road trips if you need to visit Aunt Barbara or, or whatever. So that's like logistically much more efficient. Now there's big cons on the other side of the coin in that that shared history also means that you get on each other's nerves right. much quicker and or you're much less likely to forgive foibles. Yeah. Or maybe you spend two hours of your work day talking about your upcoming road trip to visit Aunt Barbara and you're like, well that's just, that two hours is down the drain for working on videos. Yeah. Because we were just talking about like what time we're gonna leave on Friday. I should have been editing, but instead I was planning which Chick fil A I'm gonna stop at on I 95. Yeah. Probably in Havre de Grasse in Maryland. Well, it's too far off the interstate. I'm not stopping there.
what helps me most when I'm thinking about the creative process is just that there are always a lot of obstacles in your path and you can't deal with all of them, but you can do everything to try to get rid of the obstacles that you're putting in your own path. I was thinking about maybe some folky wisdom from John Neergaard or something. Like, after you've been having steak for a long time, beans, beans taste fine. <laughs>